Hello everybody, welcome to Primus and our program B for Belarus and uh, we are happy to greet Vladimir Baranich. Vlad Hello. Hello. Vlad is country consultant, the media analyst and today we are going to discuss the theme which is uh, the hottest topic probably in the universe. It is dedicated to uh, Belarus and coronavirus. How Belarusians are dealing with this critical health issue, economic issue, social issue, scientific issue. There are many many rumors many different points of view and Belarus is unique in uh, some at least ways Belarusian football league is still on and today uh, football fans of nine clubs said we are protesting against this we want suspension of the football game Vlad what is your take on the coronavirus crisis in Belarus and its treatment is similar to that in Sweden uh, Finland uh, rather than than that in Italy, Spain, uh, and even South uh, Korea. You know, uh, my personal opinion, a little bit, not a little bit, but uh, hardly is uh, of any importance. Although, you know, I used to be science editor of the news at the news newspaper and have my, let's say, semi-professional opinion. So I'm not believer. No, we this, don't. We don't even pretend to be scholars in this issue. I right? call it. We uh, observers. I call it for short K19 mm -hmm. uh, scare, mm -hmm. and uh, but. The most important how Belarus behaves here, mm -hmm. and it looks like the hottest, well, the coolest. I mean, the the coolest um, invincible country in the in the Europe at least. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I don't know how in, how in Africa somewhere, but but you know, it's just uh, nothing happened. Uh, you know, uh, no quarantine. No shutting down. Everything works in normal mode. Yep. Uh, when uh, just at, le at least until uh, recently, until the last week, schools operate, everything kindergartens is, operate, uh, everything, production facilities, uh, rehearsals the for the coming parade of May right. of Victory Victory Day is coming. Uh, um, sport events like hockey plays uh, and even the most important the president himself yeah. he goes into public into the factory and uh, greet meets, workers meets, uh, goes you know among these uh, workers wonderful statements about coronavirus and everything but yeah tell me why you believe you see the difference between the way even the Kremlin and Putin behave and Lukashenko and his team why I, I can imagine the, the difference between let's say South Korea uh, Italy and Belarus. Italy was shocked by so many ways that they was not prepared. But then come it came to Belarus, and first the Belarusian authorities denied that. Oh no, we just we have flu, we have just regular stuff, we nothing to worry about. Then gradually, and Russia uh, stick, stuck to that particular line of reasoning. Then something changed, and Moscow right now, Russia is closed. Uh, everybody around us yes. uh, is closed. Is Only Belarus is open with open borders, open mind, and uh, we say, come on, what's going on? At the same time, the government wants one $900, one $900 million loan from IMF, emergency loan, to combat con coronavirus uh, consequences. Here's a funny thing, actually. This is ironic. Uh, you know, the uh, Russian government is also, also, you know, always would like money from anybody. On any reason. <laughs> on any reason. That's, you know, that's, uh, that's understandable. The thing is that they, they mm -hmm. trap themselves. Mm -hmm. Because if they would uh, uh, mm -hmm. announce something like, like in mm -hmm. Italy or in, uh, in Spain, you know, these trucks with corpses, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, that's reasonable. I mean, mm -hmm. we have every reason to claim for this money. That's Right. But uh, President announced publicly, he said, this is no, here's no virus, this is all a scare, this is only panic, mass psychosis. And also he said that, uh, you know, my special, you know, intelligence service in, informed me that there is nothing like that, so this is only a scare, mm -hmm. a mass panic. So, and he said also that, like, uh, you know, funny things are the, who, you, who, you know, not aware of that. He said, like, well, we go better to the fields, so work with tractor. Tractor is the best cure for any Tractor, virus. sauna, and, sauna uh, and 100 vodka. grams of vodka. And right? vodka, yes, of course. It's like, reminds me, uh, uh, you know, when he was... 
uh, be given example of Hitler's Germany. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the great example for him was as, uh, f- and the, as he said, understanding mm-hmm. of uh, political and presidential mm-hmm. power, mm-hmm. strong, firm, etc. But remember, Hitler said, mm-hmm. no medicine, no drugs for for Slavic people, mm-hmm. only vodka and tobacco. Yeah, no uh, hygiene. Hygiene, right? So, but uh, it's just you know a lot of. You know this historical and what they call it um, irony mm-hmm. of uh, life. Irony, something like Ooh, irony. Another irony, and uh, some people call it a uh, tragic irony that uh, comparing situation we are having right now with uh, 1986 and yes, Chernobyl, Chernobyl disaster. Agree. And very many people I talk to many people, especially in the countryside. I talk to people, ordinary people who live in, in the province, and they they don't understand the whole hype, the whole like urgency and the tragedy. Of the whole situation. They said, well, we are like, uh, one of my relatives said, well, uh, I've been drinking uh, vodka so much that I'm over- spirited all over, so yes, yes. I don't don't give a shit about right, any viruses. Right. <laughs> so I'm a uh, the spiritovan. The, <laughs> yes. And so, so it's, uh, for them, alcoholized to alcohol. For them, it's, it's like kind that. of you know, alcoholized, right, all over. And so for them, it's kind of uh, a lot of uh, hype, And but what they see is that uh, like first deaths in Belarus happened, and people began to react a little bit differently from this denial to maybe to kind of uh, not uh, panic, but to much more cautious approach. Because now, with like two year weeks ago, we didn't see anybody wearing masks. Now we have masks. Uh, schools now they say that well, uh, on Monday uh, schools should be open, but now parents are allowed to homeschool kids, uh, kindergartens, uh, people. Uh, uh, pin, kinder, pin kindergartens uh, fall ill and the schools fall ill and uh, there's kind of uh, attitude of uh, the parents to stay away from them. So again, like one of the plants in Minsk, uh, one of the parts of that is closed mm-hmm. down because somebody was uh, with this coronavirus infection. And so it's kind of it's spreading. And many people are wondering, and there's kind of one group of people blaming Lukashenko for not introducing uh, harsh measures and quarantine and all over, uh, stopping the country. Uh, there's another group of people saying, well, he's okay, but at the same time, uh, the authorities, no matter what the situation is, must talk to people friendly, uh, openly. We should not uh, hide situations because when you have uh, screens of computers saying that dozens of different cases of coronavirus or pneumonia in Minsk, Vitebsk, uh, all over the country. We have the uh, Minister of Healthcare going to Vitebsk, uh, holding some sessions there and introducing drastic measures. So it's like the parallel between 1986 and today is that the behavior of the government is to uh, come to make up situation and information, whatever the real uh, stuff is. And that would make people furious, suspicion, and denying. Uh, so they that's why they are feeding themselves with whatever Internet is offering and social networks. Well, you see, first of all, if we talk about uh, governmental bodies and, you know, power, you know, authorities mm-hmm. in general and uh, mass media controlled by mm-hmm. the government, uh, he received very clear um, direction, mm-hmm. which is, was said by the president himself. He mm-hmm. was smoking this, you know, so-called uh, mm-hmm. panic, mm-hmm. psychosis, mass, mass psychosis, mm-hmm. and everything like that. And uh, remember, you know, like three weeks ago, mm-hmm. uh, the state-owned TV was just making uh, very fun, cynical, right. making ah, fun of. Of everything what was going around Belarus, mm-hmm. it was like, you know, uh, it, re- it resembles me. Uh, I used to be avid mm-hmm. computer game player, mm-hmm. and uh, one of my favorite was in the beginning of 1990s was the Doom. Doom, yeah. You know the the, the very Doom Gloom. Doom the we're Hell on die, we're Hell die. on Hell on Earth. It was called Doom Game. It <laughs> Hell on Earth. It was Doom One and Doom Two, and there was. You know, this cheat code, IDDQD, IDDQD right. and uh, it looks like, you know, uh, our authorities, they, they enter that code, mm-hmm. and everything, you know, everywhere in the world is uh, hell on earth, but mm-hmm. Belarus is kind of, 
a paradise. It's unique. Uh, well, essentially, this uh, uh, Belarus is saving money on uh, uh, self isolation because everybody around isolated themselves. Yes, correct. <laughs> that's that's fun. And another thing is ironical that uh, well, Belarus is the is officially dictatorship, the last dictatorship in Europe, and one of the like you know we have somebody in the see, east who is challenging you this status. But yeah, but Belarus now is the most open, most, uh, how to say, I don't know what the word would be. A country without not, not borders. <laughs> but, but, but benign, I would say, uh, because if you look at the United States, there's severe, you know, like curfews or something like, you know, almost No, curf- but that's all based on uh, decisions of the states in the United States, and it's different, it varies from state to state, and uh, there are uh, experts in this issue saying that over 100,000 Americans would die, and... Uh, yeah, in, in Europe, a, democratic Europe, right. countries like Germany, you can't go outside on the street and walk in the street. Uh, no, but that's about, yes, it's, it's a Uh, kind of what is your take on this balance between freedom privacy and security and healthcare because let's say if you uh, you're ill right you go around you spread the virus like this uh, lady uh, from in South Korea who uh, was the source of contagion of contagion for over about 600,000 people or people in Italy they go to church they kiss the cross and this is the way to same as here uh, they kiss icons now, the yeah, but now they say that oh, uh, in uh, R- Roman Catholic Church, they said, no, no kissing right now, we have to stick to the distance, so they're uh, taking measures to prevent this from happening. But uh, in in general, right, when you look at this way of dealing with the problem, it varies from country to country. But being in the company with the Netherlands and Sweden seems to justify the way Belarusian, uh, Belarusian government is dealing with the problem. Yeah, this in this particular, I'm talking about healthcare problem because now they say, well, we have more uh, appliances to ventilate lungs than per capita than Italy has. So that seems that Italy and Spain were are less prepared to deal with this disease. Plus, another we have injections when we were against uh, tuberculosis, and it also seems to boost our immune system. So we are not uh, prone to this one such of kind the of, w- yeah, one, one of, of the uh, theories. You know, they like just they, they actually Russians uh, speculate about it, saying. In the world, because Soviet Union was so cool, That's everywhere was, <laughs> you know, was uh, inoculated. So we're now mm-hmm. the healthiest people on earth. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, c- quite debatable, let's say. And the thing, the problem is here again. Is you mentioned Chernobyl? Uh, it is, it reminds me Chernobyl very much, you know, mm-hmm. um, because. Uh, since uh, both Russia, well, I don't know what's going on in Russia, although I, you know, look in mm-hmm. news and mm-hmm. read about what's going on there. But Belarus, at least Belarus, is also one of the claimers of this uh, mm-hmm. to be inherit uh, to, to have this heritage mm-hmm. or to be an heir of the Soviet Union. Uh, like little Soviet Union, special mentality is still there. Uh, I so. mean, Lukashenko is, you know, he he claims to be the the real uh, keeper heir of the, the Soviet yes, tradition, traditions, and etc. And uh, uh, true, you know, mm-hmm. like he said, the Belarusians are, uh, are Russians mm-hmm. with the quality mark. Mm-hmm. You know, it was quality mark in Soviet <laughs> times, you know, with the best products made. Yeah, yeah but look at the even the way uh, the government is behaving. Uh, people uh, of the society, business community apart, we know how to deal with the situation better. Uh, Ideologues don't do anything about it. They don't uh, understand the severity of the situation. They don't deal with facts that people spread around. At the same time, what is a really big concern uh, that I am having, I have, is that uh, the economic uh, trade, monetary consequences of this coronavirus disease and uh, the shutdown of European Union, of uh, Eurasian Economic Union, and look at the uh, behavior of the government. It uh, introduced price regulation, introduced bans on export of uh, some food products. Uh, Business community claim made a list of different measures to neutralize the negative effects of this counter, of this uh, kind of uh, systemic break, uh, kind of uh, shakedown of the economy. 
and uh, nothing is going on. So they don't have any compensation. They are on their own. Moreover, uh, rent, uh, base unit is up. Uh, feed to uh, neutralize plastic is up. Uh, credit lines are still expensive, prohibitively expensive. So uh, the consequent, everybody around is doing this. Ukraine, Russia, European Union. So even uh, uh, if we set aside uh, healthcare issues, we see that the government should concentrate, focus their, its attention on social economic reforms, on helping uh, making some adequate measures to uh, help uh, manufacturers, to help uh, labor. Essentially, if uh, you are in tourist company and in tourist business, over about 6,000 uh, 6, people were employed, or in hotel business, or in uh, on retail, you're gone. Well, you don't have any hotel. business. Did you see hotel? Yeah, yeah exactly. Night? So it's absolutely it's dark. Dark. Well, nobody goes there, and this is. I'll the, put those pictures on my website. I right. and I this is yeah. just the beginning because even if uh, uh, the situation is defrozen in European Union, Russia, and Ukraine, it will take like, like three, four months for these things to get to back to normal, and this is the time when. Uh, uh, economic uh, entities uh, get the, the most painful blow to their finance, and how do you see how do you see the way the government has been conducting dialogue with the society and business community, not directly on uh, coronavirus and health issues, but on social economic uh, consequences and ramifications of that? Here's you know very dear picture, you know very. Dark, gloomy. dark, gloomy picture because this is doom. <laughs> doom, yes, thing. truly. Um, you know, uh, see the the thing is, uh, although we you know make such maybe politically incorrect and cynical jokes about IDDQD mm -hmm. and etc. Although there is a great tragedy, mm -hmm. but uh, the um, I think the the real because you know as as, uh, as being journalist and since I've been journalist for twenty years. I always uh, look for mm -hmm. the core, not into uh, irrational, but mm -hmm. into rational mm -hmm. uh, explanations. And the rational explanation is that uh, such mm -hmm. bravery of uh, Belarusian mm -hmm. government and the president is based be on uh, lack of money. They can't afford to isolate, to go Keep into around. quarantine mm -hmm. and to, to do all these measures other countries in the world do now. And uh, they simply and to you know that's that's why uh, mm -hmm. this all this you know the, the attitude is like mm -hmm. they call it like traditional Russian attitude that uh, everything will dissipate by itself mm -hmm. you know it goes goes uh, the wind blows <laughs> and you know this fog blows away with it so um, probably they there is something like it's more more, more Russian attitude like. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hope for the miracle, yeah, you know, right. waiting for the miracle that something happens and everything you, you know, wake up in the morning and everything is fine. It's just no, things will uh, <clears throat> somehow get into normal in its own yes. way. Yes, and uh, uh, this is one of the rational explanations, let's mm -hmm. say, they, why, why they do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, the another thing is, uh, I don't know why the president, maybe this, well, that was mm -hmm. the, the first, you know, mm -hmm. not the mm -hmm. second uh, reason. But, so, uh, the president announced, you know, the, his stance was mm -hmm. that uh, no virus at all, mm -hmm. just a hoax, it's, uh, it's uh, everything is uh, some, mm -hmm. uh, some artificial panic, etc. And uh, since he announced that, mm -hmm. I don't remember that he ever retreated from his mm -hmm. uh, previous position. So now government and authorities, they have to follow mm -hmm. uh, the set course. Mm -hmm. This collision course may be like the Titanic or whatever, mm -hmm. they're uh, going straight uh, onto the iceberg. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, there are a lot of people who, you know, privately they understand or they think mm -hmm. they understand uh, the real danger of this, like many physicians now in hospitals, they uh, alarm, they mm -hmm. write in, uh, you know, on social media, 
and they mm -hmm. say it's a disaster we're waiting for something worse than in Italy mm -hmm. and in Spain and people now uh, by de facto just like mm -hmm. on their own you know they they, they, they get used to uh, during Soviet times especially you you you, you, mm -hmm. you said about Chernobyl mm -hmm. and that's really uh, what we remember I said I do remember I was uh, I was 20 years old at that time in Chernobyl and you were the, the same age I was in the army at that time I, I was here I, I just returned <laughs> and uh, you know it was uh, I, I remember a lot, almost every day you know mm -hmm. just like everything was behaving I was listening to the uh, voices of uh, voice of America another you know mm -hmm. voice of Sweden uh, Swedish, Swedish radio mm -hmm. and uh, when they announced that and mm -hmm. nobody understood it Mm -hmm. Well, it's, everybody's going fine. The, this traditional uh, mm -hmm. first mm, first of May, these uh, demonstrations of workers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything is going on. And uh, yeah, but uh, right now what we see is that people tend to help themselves, <coughs> sell like help yourself. But the government, nobody relies on the government. The government has proved to be inadequate. Government has proved to be evil. Government, the government has proved to be the source of all evils and problems for the people. That's how they view them. By That's, people. And from I think that the whole, no matter when the crisis uh, is over, right? I think that the uh, conclusion many people would make is that uh, we uh, should uh, downside the government we should uh, keep it under control because even in the situation of the crisis when people uh, rely on should rely on this on some emergency at least to be a moderator facilitator of the problems it just showed incompetence inadequacy and uh, taking care of its own interests instead of even showing compassion and sympathy to the people See, in Belarus, when uh, you and I know and everybody knows when we talk about government, it's uh, something like, I would say, it's uh, axumar, no, it's euphemistic, it's <laughs> e e euphemistic for the president. I mean, uh, yeah, it's the like, authoritarian like country French definitely king, is uh, right. the, 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 the uh, how do you call this, uh, the state. I'm the is, state. I'm, I'm the, the state. state. So here's when everything depends from one man. Mm -hmm. He orders this, it will be this way. He orders that, it will be that way. Mm -hmm. So uh, downsizing government mm -hmm. or changing it, it makes nothing mm -hmm. because all decisions come from one man. Mm -hmm. So we have to face it and uh, so people understand this and mm -hmm. they um, adjust mm -hmm. their lives to mm -hmm. this. So right now, mm -hmm. uh, although many people, in, well, let's say, not understand. Again, I say everybody mm -hmm. can think differently about. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody believes in, uh, in mm -hmm. the virus. Let's say it. Somebody not. But uh, they can do nothing about it. We have no masks. Or we have no respirators available. Mm -hmm. uh, People can't leave their jobs. Yeah, something that really... Because the economic situation is right. very bad. Very yeah, bad sympathize indeed. with the doctors, because doctors and <coughs> nurses and people who work in hospitals, they really risk, they don't have any uh, means to protect themselves from these viruses, no matter what they are. And especially we do, do, do not have the uh, the cure. And if your immune system is, uh, is low or is bad, definitely you are in this risk group. And instead of... And they are kind of a lot, they are ordered uh, to keep silent at the same time to uh, manipulate public opinion. So they, instead of uh, the situation when like fire people, right? When there's a fire, uh, people try to, uh, trust firemen yes. because they are the only one who can deal with the fire. In this situation, when there's an epidemic of whatever crisis. Uh, we trust doctors because they are the most professionals to deal with that and we mu they must have free hand. They must not have contacts with any ideologues. They shouldn't talk about and think about political correctness. They must tell the truth and only doctors should be key in dealing with that. Uh, no matter what they have, they may have different opinions. But in this situation, now situation, uh, because we have uh, talking heads, mm which are not trusted by the people, by the businesses. This creates another kind of additional wave of uh, distrust of the people to the establishment. 
Uh, yes, um, the, the thing is that no matter what authorities would say, people won't trust them, won't believe them. Uh, especially now, when after all was said that it is everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Now, step by step, they have to admit there was one death, another death, mm -hmm. due to this K-19. Mm -hmm. And uh, authorities, they still... Uh, they still move in the same direction as, as nothing has happened. For example, look, the best example, you know, we see that businesses collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, factories and, you know, this close, and I see the, the, the biggest factory, like tractor factory, mm -hmm. I know there are people who work there. They, they receive their salaries now like uh, 150 rubles, mm -hmm. um, um, dollars, mm -hmm. in, in like three, 300 or 400 mm -hmm. rubles, which is, you know, it's, twi uh, it's like 150 US dollars. And that's nothing. I mean, uh, and, and they still, I mean, they still have to somehow to survive mm -hmm. in this economic disaster. Mm -hmm. But... At the same time, government still mm -hmm. uh, is after those who are called, uh, how they called, you know, those useless people mm -hmm. who don't work um, in um, freeloaders, halakshikis. Yeah, this tuniyatsi they call it in Russian, but it's I don't know. It, there is no such. Well, actually, those who know this this mm -hmm. phenomena mm -hmm. uh, in Belarus and mm -hmm. like in uh, in in, in mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. In civilized, these civilized mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. when somebody is unemployed, mm -hmm. uh, he gets uh, help, assistance mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the state, uh, money or whatever. But here, those unemployed people, they have to pay to the state. That's right. It's and like, uh, <laughs> they still been, you know, uh, been after with the no state. No revoked, no, the, nobody. That's, uh, that's so ridiculous. That's so, this, this that's decision, so right? I don't know, it's just, just and humane it's uh, and uh, people lose well, they can't find job mm -hmm. and uh, this this you know they, and, but, but they don't retreat from this mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. at least they could show goodwill well bad times let's do this no all right so what do you think uh, how will it end and what would be the consequences of uh, uh, coronavirus uh, not only health uh, issues I mean that we wish uh, all Belarusians to be healthy to stay away from viruses and to take care of the elderly people <coughs> primarily as it's uh, they're the most vulnerable at the same time I think that uh, in terms of social economic situation you know that uh, 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 de devaluation happened. Uh, inflation now. The uh, the government uh, suspended f free Currency pricing. Currency depreciation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, then uh, you have business activity which is uh, on stand uh, standstill. Oil, which on the one hand, as uh, the government and the prime minister said, we bought uh, oil from Russia for th four dollars. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> which is like uh, sounds like a joke. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, we still uh, the uh, one liter of gasoline in the United States costs 25 cents. In Belarus, it's about 75 cents. Mm -hmm. So again, so you see that the price structure in Belarus is before the crisis. And uh, the government uh, is not in a hurry to make changes to kind of ease the burden of the on the people. So how would the... the well, and at the same time, we are having uh, I think that we will start very very soon a parliamentary presidential election campaign which again will definitely depend on we, we know the result we know the rules of the game they haven't changed at the same time uh, there will definitely be a lot of pressure and it's not only like uh, from the economic perspective I see this uh, state planned economy which is like good for nothing it's not competitive it's not efficient it lacks basic innovation skills and uh, many things but uh, it's what uh, this crisis may add is it's immoral, it's not human, it uh, ignores people, and the government, which is a big leviathan, is uh, has left people alone to deal with crises uh, without helping them. Well, I wish they left people alone, but they still, as they say, I mean, no, no, they, they, this case, is exactly. Yes, they, they, if they would even. You know, they leave them alone. Just try to just like uh, exempt them from from taxes, mm -hmm. from all these stupid uh, 
uh, extra money paid for don't know what what mm -hmm. uh, fines uh, like you know and in Belarus fines mm -hmm. are already planned for oh, the yeah. future yeah it's like part, it's, part of the budget yeah so um, so in this if, if you see what what's go, what, what we were what we are to expect well I have two scenarios two options you know, two scenarios one is bad another one is worse mm -hmm. and uh, one is bad if uh, if this k19 is a hoax you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's good i mean mm -hmm. it's bad it's good but it is bad mm -hmm. uh, it, it is good that it is bad not worse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's uh, the economic situation is very terrible because this will i mean the whole world is in such decline mm -hmm. economically so Belarus uh, lost its, you know, outside markets, its Europe bonds, you know, down, everything is mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. all business activity is down. So it's a matter of only time when all these um, mm -hmm. uh, backlashes on, uh, on, on, on people, ordinary people, ordinary people. Yeah, right. that's in just in, in, in general life. Yeah, and but who benefits from this hoax situation? <coughs> essentially, this fake thing, that fake news, that is disinformation, information warfare. And the, there's some people joke that you know, uh, Belarus cannot, of course, reproduce or be part of this Crimea-like scenario in Ukraine. But instead of green uh, men, uh, green chelavichki, mm -hmm. we may have uh, people in uh, white garments, in white clothes, uh, taking care of saving uh, Belarusians from corona virus because the government doesn't do enough and this kind of humanitarian mission to save Belarus from the Belarusian government I'm afraid only gray people from outer space you mm -hmm. know could appear here I, right. I wouldn't think that the world uh, would care about Belarus because they have their own problems and uh, as that's part of the second scenario mm -hmm. I, I can mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. can hardly imagine because my imagination you know, built on uh, upon you know these Hollywood uh, horror movies, mm -hmm. uh, probably not mm -hmm. uh, not imaginable enough. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know, if mm -hmm. this K nineteen is real, I mean, mm -hmm. if I say that it is real, two, but it's take, uh, how I, to I, deal I, with that. I take two different right. approaches. Mm -hmm. Like the government says, it is not real. People mm -hmm. believe. Some people believe. Mm -hmm. The government, some people believe the world, let's, let's mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. and if, if this virus is really deadly plug, mm -hmm. then man, that's uh, this, this economic situation mm -hmm. multiplied, multiplied right, right. on this death, mm -hmm. on this, since our, our hospitals mm -hmm. already uh, don't cope with, with this, you know, mm -hmm. pneumonias, etc. That's it's 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 a real you know hell on earth. We 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 do need this IDD QD you know code. Yeah, uh, code or no code. I people mean, would uh, lose money, as uh, you remember yeah. in 1918, we were the government was proud to uh, exceed this $500 wage threshold. We have like 520 almost dollars a month average wage. Right now, if you uh, make calculations, definitely is like. Eighty dollars less, and uh, this is just the beginning. So when uh, Belarusians cannot sell uh, goods to Russia, and uh, they have limited capacity of uh, making money on oil products, on fertilizers, on metals, uh, on other uh, basic goods, then there will be a big blow to the budget, big blow to manufacturers and to employers, and most of the employers are uh, government enterprises and at the same time uh, the government does nothing to kind of to cushion the blow to self-employed to SMEs so there will be like multiple disruption of the economy and social what they, some people call contract would it lead to outrage to somehow more political demand of the uh, population to the government and Lukashenko personally well, the how to say the psycho, um, sociological, psychological, mm -hmm. you know, mental out, uh, you know, rage is really there mm -hmm. already. 
I mean, if you listen to, mm -hmm. uh, talk to, you know, I know some, you know, people who work at the factories, and they're just ordinary people. They don't care about politics. Man, how they say bad words about the government and the, the, the chief himself. And uh, so, uh, you know, I can't imagine what's, what, what will be going on, but it will be very bad. I mean, I hope I am... I'm too alarmistic in this, but um, but uh, I don't see uh, mm -hmm. the solution because economically we're very in a very bad situation, sociologically and uh, mm -hmm. in terms of um, how people feel, maybe psychologically again mm -hmm. it's also bad. Uh, people are simply not prepared for this. No, people, well, you know, uh, in 1995, when the average wage in Belarus was about $30, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, we got over much worse times uh, in the um, past. So right now, it's uh, when uh, you were in this ditch and you went up and then you went up uh, faster, that's one thing. Uh, what would be the psychological effect on the people when they reach like five hundred dollar wage? They bought cars, they bought apartments, they uh, learned to, uh, they know how to travel, so they got used to that. And suddenly, you again uh, third crisis in ten years. You must tighten your belts. You must revise your budget, and you must recognize the fact that you don't have any savings for the rainy day. And this is the rainy day we are having right now. It's indeed a very rainy day, and uh, because many people, uh, they, they really, they lived, they were buying real estate, uh, building apartments, houses, uh, buying cars, some mm -hmm. fancy cars, and traveling a lot, mm -hmm. so this day has come, yes, and... Um, Who will come to save us? No. The government uh, or people, Belarusians, uh, analyzing how the government is behaving, has been behaving all these months, they say, okay, this is the final straw. We are leaving the country for good. We don't believe... Uh, you can't leave the country. No, no, but right now, I mean, when the, all the quarantine is over, I mean, there will be like this uh, uh, consequences. This, you have this... Yeah, probably someday, uh, yes. Uh, this uh, taste, uh, uh, aftertaste <coughs> of, of the whole situation. And many young people, when they see how they were treated by the government, they were not consulted, they were ignored, they were not informed. They say, oh, Belarus, well, we don't need it. We will go and we will take care of our lives somewhere Somewhere else, so that will speed up uh, very negative demographic problems in the in Belarus. It will speed up uh, the uh, in outflow of capital from Belarus and entrepreneurship capital because uh, entrepreneurs, instead of giving some you know some at least some help in whatever form uh, they need, they just ignore. Okay, pay more rent. Uh, nobody talks about suspension of fines, of uh, taxes. Uh, it's good. They behave as if everything is okay. Yes. So, and the people would believe, okay, we don't need this government, so they cannot, I don't believe they would turn into revolutionaries, uh, or they would be like, major political radicalization of the situation. But definitely the people start uh, uh, more frequently voting with their uh, feet, leaving the country. Well, that's uh, if, uh, you know, if Belarus is more, we have the Iron Curtain on the other side now. If, uh, if other side, I mean uh, other countries mm -hmm. like, uh, like let's say, mm -hmm. where those countries where now uh, people from mm -hmm. Arabic countries, mm -hmm. from the East, they flood to, to Germany and other countries, if Germany, say, would allow, mm -hmm. I mean... No, oh, Germany has eased, liberalized like yeah, the market. But, but if, if, if they would allow, if people would in mass would, would rush in there. Poland, because, Lithuania, yes. Latvia, Estonia, because, Ukraine, uh, right now if the Ukraine We already, you know, we're talking uh, in past uh, mm -hmm. programs of uh, mm -hmm. our talks. And um, as I said uh, earlier, uh, one of the major uh, like sociological sentiments mm -hmm. 
And according to polls, mm -hmm. that uh, young people already they they see their good life only somewhere there outside Belarus. Mm -hmm. Some very smart in uh, Western countries. Some less smart, those who can't, you know, teach mm -hmm. uh, fancy languages, mm -hmm. they think about moving to Russia, mm -hmm. like working in, in Moscow. And now, uh, all those people, you know, who used to work in Moscow mm -hmm. as guest workers, now they're back because mm -hmm. uh, Russia, you know, they, yeah. they either send them, they stopped paying them because, you know, they're uh, shutting down their business. Like They also have, uh, oh gosh, Russia is having such a huge blow. I know a lot of people who came oil back. And everything. Well, just imagine, they, they don't <coughs> understand how to survive with oil thirteen dollars per barrel. It's yeah. just for them this is the shock is much bigger because Russia is definitely an oil exporting country and it relied on uh, raw materials and natural resources much more to, than Belarus. And now and taking into account how much money is being stolen by oh, yeah. you know those uh, yeah. uh, compradors, you know, this less uh, not oligarchs but you know the governmental authorities, everything like that. All right. So to conclude, I think that the Belarusian Leviathan uh, has failed miserably, and many more people are observing it. And I think that there will be many more people who are disillusioned uh, with the idea that the state, the government, can take care of uh, everything in life. And this is a wind of opportunity for us, libertarians. Correct. We uh, we just see how our ideas come to mm -hmm. well, they they how to say they came through pain, came, came through <laughs> right. through experience, and we can just see what's going on. Actually, it's a good um, good good uh, chance for those so sociology sociology. Uh, scholars, mm -hmm. politology scholars from the West, they can come mm -hmm. here and study all this uh, in this mm -hmm. kind of closed environment. Right. It's unique, actually. Belarus now is uh, is unique in many aspects. Mm -hmm. um, well, we mentioned them. I say that they're just really unique, and mm -hmm. so that's interesting to. To be an observer of mm -hmm. this, or well, let's say spectator, but you know, there's like, um, of course, it is better to to watch from outside mm -hmm. than to live here. Right. And uh, but uh, still, well, that's that's what we have. I think there we are looking forward to a major shift in uh, policy, not only in Belarus but uh, in our uh, among our neighbors. And uh, as Lukashenko says, viruses come and go, but life goes on. I hope that life will go on in a better trajectory than uh, in the last ten years when Belarus is in the in the stagnation uh, trap. So I think that uh, the government definitely needs renewal, and uh, there are no signs of uh, self. Uh, kind of identification of uh, like uh, renewing itself. So the government showed uh, inability to deal with the problems of governance, of uh, accountability, of quality, of uh, uh, holding a dialogue with the people. And I think that this coronavirus. Uh, Again, uh, health issues apart and may everybody be healthy and uh, stay away and uh, we want, uh, we don't want any, any Belarusians, any Russians, any Americans, anybody to die from, of, uh, from it. But we believe that uh, in the end of the day, the whole world will start thinking about uh, the, the Leviathan, which is uh, very dangerous, not only in Belarus, but in other parts, of, including G7 countries. Yeah. Uh, pumping trillions of uh, fake money into the economy is waging currency war against emerging and developing countries like Belarus. And this is also will feel it. So I think that uh, we are living this multi-disruption and uh, we try to some have uh, 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 influence uh, things around, but I think that now is, uh, uh, there are many more horizontal information networks. Uh, we need more cooperation and solidarity among ourselves rather than uh, rely on television, state uh, media, because this is just the age of mon monopoly, uh, state monopoly on information is over. And this is a very positive thing of uh, no matter new technologies emerge. 
You know, uh, what's interesting that uh, comparing Belarus with other countries, like our president, he could actually easily make a curfew, uh, mm -hmm. you know, martial uh, state, mm -hmm. and uh, he would just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. He would cancel elections and everything, but man, he, he behaves like the most, uh, how to say, benign uh, ruler of the world, because, you know, everybody, just you know, Trump and you know, other leaders, mm -hmm. they say, well, there is, mm -hmm. there is, you know, quarantine, they, they just mm -hmm. stay at home, and, and everything is open in Belarus, no closing mm -hmm. borders, and everything like, you know, mm -hmm. the whole world is allowed, like in the, in the neighboring mm -hmm. countries, they behave like closed Uh, concentration camps. Mm -hmm. Belarus, everything is free. Just go wherever you want. Um, just everything is. People, well, people left people on their own. People smell freedom, and uh, that's amazing. Can... That's you know this this something uh, which makes my mind is you know, uh, just blowing. Yeah, some people uh, cynically argue that uh, with this case, when young people leave, we have uh, 2.6 million pensioners, we have aging uh, population, the average way, uh, age of women in the countryside uh, is about 48 years old. So this is the country uh, is not dynamic, it doesn't have any perspective, it doesn't have any vision, and this is probably the most dangerous thing. So virus or not virus, but because I've got there's a lot of hype or hoax about it, but essentially dealing with the problems uh, for Belarus is not just talking about uh, masks or drugs or appliances to ventilate lungs. That's about money, that's about taxation, that's about production, that's about property rights. And there is no idea in the government how to deal with these issues. And that's what worries me most of all. Okay, Vlad, thank you yes. for your input. Uh, dear friends, we uh, had another program B for Belarus, and we talked about the issue of Belarus and coronavirus, how Belarusians are dealing with uh, this critical health issue, and we, of course, covered uh, the issues going beyond just health care, and this is how we should deal with this uh, uh, groundbreaking, this disruptive, disrupting change uh, in our lives, quite unexpected, uh, when, again, let me remind you that in the latest uh, global risk report uh, published by World Economic Forum in January 2020, there were five top risks, all connected with green, uh, green uh, this, green this, uh, so biological, um, biodiversity lost, uh, global warming, all this Greta Thunberg stuff. Oh, yeah. Nobody talked about this thing. So, yes. uh, and this is how it happens sometimes. You, know, you believe that uh, you live in a predictable, stable, stable right. world, and uh, shit happened in the morning, and the, by the evening you are dead, or you are very rich. <laughs> so we wish you uh, to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Read more, stick to science, common sense, and of course, uh, take your time to study, explore theory of liberalism, liberty, that will definitely make you more empowered, more uh, kind of uh, equipped, uh, armed to deal with uh, current problems and crises. Cheerio, guys. Hello. See you. See Goodbye. You. Bye.